And I want to start with your column, actually. It's called The Fed Has Reached a Turning Point. It's getting quite a bit of attention because it says, in part, that their next meeting officials are very likely to respond to persistently low inflation and global trade risks by cutting interest rates for the first time in more than 10 years. If history is any guide, it will mean that the Fed is highly unlikely to be willing to raise rates for the next 25 to 50 meetings. That is a big deal. Emphasis on is. So, Narayana, that is a big deal. What leads you to that conclusion? Yeah, thanks for having me on, David. Uh, no, I, it's uh, based on history. You know, the only way we can forecast what's going to happen in the future is by looking at the past. And the Fed uh, really is a, a slow-moving animal when it comes to thinking about monetary policy. So it goes through phases. Uh, it was in a uh, tightening phase from 04 to 06, an uh, easing phase uh, from uh, 2007 on until to, uh, 2013. And we've been through a tightening phase, I think, from – uh, 2013 through the through the end of 2018, uh, in, in, and now I think the Fed is, is uh, re-entering an easing phase. Uh, it, it doesn't mean, of course, that you know the Fed is obviously responsive to data, but the bar I think for for tightening now for is for to, to 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 raise rates after this meeting is going to be uh, um, pretty high, and so I I think it's reasonable to think about the next. Uh, three to five, maybe even longer years as being ones of, of, um, uh, of easing in the, in, in the Federal Reserve. Uh, Nariana, how much of a need for a weaker dollar is that easing cycle feeding into? Uh, you know, I think that the Fed is, the dollar to the Fed is just one more way that its interest rate policy uh, filters into the, to the U.S. economy, into the world economy. Uh, I think the Fed looks around and sees global trade risks. It sees uh, low inflation. And so it, I think it sees, uh, given the, the, those two ingredients, it sees a world where uh, entering into an easing pattern is, is, is the safest way to keep the, keep the economy strong. Nariana, if in fact you prove to be right, and, and there's not raising for another 25 to 50 Fed meetings, what does that tell us about where inflation is going to be over that period of time? And for that matter, maybe even growth. I, you know, that uh, uh, forecast of mine is based on the idea that inflation is going to remain soft and uh, that the past on uh, behavior inflation, where it's not been responsive to how low employment's gotten, is going to continue to be true. And if, if that's so, um, you know, if inflation remains low, then there's really not much impetus for the Fed to, to, to uh, start to tighten. And, and, but the I think once they enter in this easing phase, the bar for them in terms of what kind of inflation patterns they have to see to start to raise rates um, is pretty high. Uh, so they're going to have to be something above 2 percent, solidly above 2 percent, sustainably above 2 percent for them to, to, to switch into tightening mode. So do, can I infer from what you're saying that the Fed is, in essence, actively pursuing a weaker dollar policy? No, not uh, – the, the, as I say, the Fed – the dollar, uh, from the point of view of the Federal Reserve, is completely the province of the Treasury. If, if, if the administration wants a weaker dollar, uh, that's up to the Secretary of the Treasury to do. Um, the Fed, by, by easing interest rates, is trying to stimulate uh, aggregate demand in the United States. One way that happens is that um, the dollar tends to fall when, uh, when the, the Fed, Fed uh, eases policy, and that makes goods and services in the U.S. cheaper, and, and people abroad are more likely to buy it. But there's many channels, you know, uh, interest rates on, on uh, car loans fall, interest rates on uh, furniture layaway fall. These are all channels through which monetary policy works. 